Good evening, Builders. Crow Sama here. So, we have a lot of news to cover today. Uh, we have new banners. We have a new event. We also got a lot of different information that was released uh, by Ban Bandai Namco in concerns to the game, the arena, and everything. So, we're going to cover a lot of that stuff. Uh, one couple, well, actually a couple of things before we get into that is uh, the next analysis video is going to be on the Shar Zaku 2. So, I'm probably going to be doing that tomorrow. And uh, after that, you know, definitely just going to be asking for your opinions on what MS needs to be reviewed, uh, analyzed to be exact. Uh, so let me know in the comment section below. Let me know on the polls in the community tab. If you didn't know, I do post in that community tab very often. So just go over there, you know, click whatever one you want to see get an analyzed next. And I usually try and update these uh, after every single analysis video. Also, at 12,000 subscribers, I'm considering doing a Let's Play of Gun and Breaker 3. I know a lot of people have been saying either A, hey, we want to see you play a Gun and Breaker game. This has been going back for like, I think the past year. People have been wanting to see me play Gun and Breaker for whatever reason. Uh, but also, people like always have that kind of salty attitude with this game. Like, oh, why would you play this game? Why wouldn't you just play Gun and Breaker 3? I've beaten Gun, Gun and Breaker 3 completely. Like, I think the only thing I need to do is just finish up the last difficulty, but the game keeps freezing at this one stage. Um, I can still just replay it though and uh, see if I can get past that stage now, but I've already beaten Gun and Breaker 1, I've beaten Gun and Breaker 2, um, I'm done with Gun, uh, Gun and Breaker 3, and I refuse to play new Gun and Breaker, like, I don't think that game is, it doesn't look good at all, and I don't think it plays that good, I haven't heard anything good about it, so I'm pretty much just, you know, saying, hey, don't really want to play that, but Gun and Breaker 3 looks a little more interesting as a let's play, and it is Gundam, and... Hey, this is a Gundam channel, so I might do that at my 12,000 subscriber mark. Uh, but other than that, definitely let's check out what the news has to say. So for the event, it is going to be the Gabera in the Covert Gabera uh, event. Now, this is a pretty cool MS. It is from Stardust Memories. I I liked it. I think it is a pretty cool looking uh, mobile suit. It is also kind of, I don't think it's directly related, or I'm, I'm pretty sure like parts of it was uh, utilized in the uh, creation of the GP04. I had to go and check my details on that because I, I do think there's some kind of relationship between uh, the Gabera and the GP04, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I do just love the overall design. I think it's one of the cool looking mono eyes in the overall UC universe. Um, but it's going to begin on you know same time. So for me, it's going to start on Wednesday at noon. I'm definitely going to be playing that, but I, I probably... Yeah, I'll play it for a little bit, and then uh, I'll make a video covering it, and I'll just go through all the stages in that video. But it is, of course, going to have the same difficulties, normal, hard, very hard. Um, who's to say if it's going to have the same energy consumption as this one or the previous one? To be honest, I, I kind of hope it's the previous one. Uh, not, well, not this one, but the first one, where it's 45 energy for very hard. It just, it's less grinding, and I think it's overall a better uh, enjoyable play. That's my personal take on it, but yeah, that's just how I feel. Uh, so, hey, same thing, you're going to be acquiring coins, and of course the coins that you uh, gathered from the Blitz event is going to be obsolete, so use them while you can. If not, go ahead and transfer them, uh, we'll sell them in the upgrade shop. Now you can also exchange these for Gunpla parts, Awakening circuits, and more, so same song and dance. You'll probably be looking at the same exact parts except for the MS that you can actually buy, so... Once again, I'm beginning my Awakening Circuits, and I'm going to go ahead and upgrade another part to Gold, and it might actually be the Barbados uh, Arms. I'm really looking at um, you know upgrading those to Gold because having a completely Gold Barbados is going to be super dangerous to face over in the arena, so I think that might be uh, what I'm going to go for. Now, of course, this is going to have bonuses, so for uh, the Blitz, you get a 2 times bonus, so just need one part, you don't need the entire MS. Uh, also, none of these stack. They don't multiply into each other, so you can't have like a blitz and have a dragon, and it's like you, then you're getting like two, uh, ten times the amount of coins. No, it's just going to take the highest uh, multiple. So you, if you have a five and a two, it's going to take the five, and that's going to be your multiplier. Now, leading up to the actual banner, uh, you know, we are going to have the Dragon Gundam. That's going to be a five times, and then you're also going to have the Red Frame Astray, which will be a seven times. So here we are on the banner. Man, I am actually super hyped because I love both of these MSs. Uh, the previous one, you know, I, I do like uh, both of those. I probably just prefer the, um, I do like the X Divider a lot more, to be honest. Uh, the Ale Strike is cool. I do, I do like the Ale Strike, but I mean, I, I love the X Divider. 
This one, on the other hand, I think the Dragon Gundam is probably the coolest G Gundam mobile suit in the entire franchise, uh, in the entire series. Um, the Red Frame Astray is definitely a badass Astray unit. Now, you're saying, like, okay, it's just like the green frame. Yes, but it's the weaponry that comes with the Red Frame. The Red Frame is very, very well equipped with different weapons. Now, a key thing to note is that the Astray Red Frame is going to be a 4-star, whereas the Dragon Gundam is going to be a 3-star. I personally am not complaining. I, you know, I'm, I was never looking at Dragon Gundam to be like a 100% uh, like MS to uh, to use. Like it's probably not going to be like a permanent uh, MS that I'm going to main. It would be one that I would love to do an analysis on. I think it being a three star is going to allow those pulls to be a little bit easier. So anyone who is like me that loves a Dragon Gundam, you should be able to pull these with no problem with maybe. I'll say in about 30, maybe even 50 pulls. So I'm really hoping whenever I do my big pull, um, I can go ahead and get a few uh, Dragon Gundam parts and hopefully make the complete unit and do analysis on it. Now the Dragon Gundam doesn't really have any weapons outside of its fists. Its fist does have like flames that can actually, um, you know, it could utilize. The main body core unit does have the butterfly wings. Uh, and also on the back, it has like staffs that it can throw and like paralyze you. It's like little like flags. Um, so it's very interesting to see how this MS is going to work. I'm pretty sure the backpack is going to uh, be an EX skill. I think the main core body is going to be a uh, EX skill. I don't know if it's going to be like a passive ability um, where like you activate it and that's it. It's kind of like a buff. Or if it's going to be an attacking buff just like the uh, Trans Am Raid from Exia. It could act like that. Um, I see this being very melee oriented. So the head unit is probably going to be like if you know speed or power i don't know what what uh, attribute this is going to be but it's probably like if you're one of those you get a melee buff um the legs not really too sure how the legs going to be uh i think it might just be passive once again like a passive trait uh but i think the arms is going to be an ex ability as well maybe it, it shoots out the uh the dragon arms so it's probably not gonna be an animation uh, animation that you can actually glitch it out of not glitch but you can like make it flinch and kind of cancel it but I'm pretty sure it's going to be a normal um, animation. That's that's the best I can think of, and maybe it shoot flames. But I'm pretty sure the arm is going to be an EX ability. Uh, I think the core body is going to be an EX ability, and I think the backpack may be an EX ability, and then the rest being traits. Now for the red frame, uh, he is going to be having the Gabira straight sword, so that's going to be really cool. That's probably going to be a pull and not a direct attachment to the body. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It could be attached to the actual leg unit. Uh, we've seen this in the past with other different units, but you know what? I, I do think it's going to be a separate pull. I, you know, I hate to say it like this, but I think Bandai is really trying to get a little bit more money out of us. So more likely, that sword is going to be a separate unit, which shouldn't. It's not going to be bad. You can definitely have a samurai type unit uh, in the future. You know, custom builds. Uh, but if you do want to complete the red frame, more than likely that anti-beam shield is going to be separate. Uh, it obviously is going to be separate, but that sword is definitely going to be separate. Now, in terms of what it's going to have and, and you know, as far as abilities, I think the backpack is going to be the twin saber ability, much like the, uh, the green frame astray. The head's going to be probably more, I want to say it's going to be melee based, uh, but not too sure because the red frame astray does come with a, uh, a beam rifle. So it could be more mid-range, but I do see it being a melee. It's, it's kind of weird because both of these are mid, um, are close-range attackers. So we'll see. We'll see what their uh, actual like benefits are in terms of like traits. Uh, but I, you know, the legs are probably gonna be traits. Um, the arms, I think, are gonna be uh, traits. The body, yeah, I think the body might be a trait as well. I don't really see this having too many ex abilities, but the arms could be an ex skill. Uh, could be something that's melee oriented or it could be something that's a buff. I don't see it being a buff. I think I would see the, the head being, um, actually the head is going to be Vulcans. Now that I think about it, because it does have two Vulcans on its head. So yeah, the, the, the head's going to be an EX, the backpack's going to be an EX, and I think the rest is going to be traits. That's kind of like my, my guess right now. And I was really good with the prediction, me and my crew over on Discord, we actually accurately predicted that the Red Frame Astray and the Dragon Gundam were both going to be the banner MSs on this uh, go around. We, we, we called this on like, I think August 17th. So hey, we're, we're, we're pretty good when it comes to these accurate uh, guesses.
Now another thing to note is that those MSs are going to be in the parts capsule too once this one completes. So you are, you are going to have that one free pull a day. So hey, you might be lucky on getting one of those. I'm going to be using my tickets on uh, the X divider whenever that one goes to the capsule too, because I do have nine uh, capsule pull tickets. So really, really hoping I can get me another X divider part. If not, then hey, it is what it is. So for the AI pilots, we are going to have Seabook Arno. He is from F91. That actually makes me really hope. That F91 is either going to be a new event next go around or he's going to be uh, in the banner. I um, actually kind of hope he's a banner because that might that may mean that he's going to be a default four star. And I really, really love the uh, F91. Uh, I love its Mirage ability, so well, the after image ability. So really hoping that's the case uh, since I'm seeing him. And we pretty much got like all the main characters we really need from F91 at this point. And next we are going to have Ellsman. He is the pilot of the Buster Gundam from Seed. It's kind of weird that we're getting a lot of Seed oriented stuff, but yeah, I mean, we got to keep in mind Seed spans a lot of different universes in terms of, well, not universes, but I guess like uh, kind of eras and, and, and plot points within its own universe. So you, do, you are going to have Seed, you're going to have Seed Destiny, Seed Astray, Seed Astray Destiny R, or whatever the hell that one's called. And there's like the other little Seed Astray variants, and you got like the Stargazer. So Seed is pretty damn big, and uh, yeah, I guess it kind of makes sense that you're going to have at least one or two uh, either AI or MSs within the Seed universe going to be on every single week, uh, banner or event. So hey, it kind of is what it is, but hey, Seabook's going to be a, a four star, and Elsman's going to be a three star, so eh, not too bad. Okay, so a couple of things that uh, Bandai has actually released is a couple of things with the arena. So we see that, you know, they're apologizing that the arena has been shut down because of, you know, large traffic. It's kind of weird that these companies really don't expect these games to blow up the way they do. Um, obviously, there wasn't a lot of marketing behind this, um, but it's like Pokemon Go. You know, when Niantic released that game, they're like, oh, just, just release it. And they were understaffed. They were not prepared for what the hell happened. Uh, the game just kept crashing upon release, and it was it was a nightmare. Even you know, eventually they got it to work a little bit. A lot of bugs, a lot of crashes here and there. But it's the same case with this game, and it's been the same case with a lot of other uh, mobile app games I've seen in the past that have big IPs next to them. So you know, I'm I'm I do understand you know where they're coming from. This is a game. Maybe they just they just maybe wasn't expecting it. They just kind of threw it out there, and hey, you know, see what happens. But a lot of people really enjoy this game. I think a lot of people, um, you know, really want to play this game and they want to see the best come out of this game. And so do I. So the fact that they're actually, you know, trying to do their best with the arenas and if they had arenas uh, open still, I think the game would not be in, in as good of a condition as it is right now. It'd probably still be crashing, still have a lot of glitches. So, you know, it's going to be coming back for a three day test trial on, um, you know, the 24th. So three days after that. Uh, but it's the note rewards obtainable from this test period will be different from those in official event periods. This does not mean the exchange. This means the daily awards you will gain. So what they're probably going to do is how, you know, like every day you gain like those like rows of uh, items like the chips, you gain uh, nippers and capital. You might get some different stuff. So some people are saying like, oh, the sumo is going away. Sumo is not going away. I don't know if you're going to gain coins, arena coins. You could be. I really do hope so because I really would love to beef up my uh, sumo before I do the analysis uh, video on him because I really, really love the sumo and I would love to have a perfect sumo uh, by the end of the arena time frame. So you got all the way to October, but I don't know when they're going to like officially announce uh, arenas coming back. We'll definitely see. But yeah, so we'd like to thank our uh, players for giving us a lot of use useful opinions and su uh, suggestions on how the game should proceed forward. Here are some of our future update plans. So the end variety to the Gumpa builds, um, looking like adding code Gumpa parts is rare drops. I, I, I can't, I don't know what that is. Um, I, I saw it somewhere on Facebook, but um, I, yeah, I'm not really too sure exactly what that means. It's probably just uh, oh, like awakening chips, I would say, uh, but not really too sure. Definitely let me know in the comment section below, please. Um, increasing the parameters of the Gundam Artemis uh, Gumpa parts. So that's really good. Um, it's... It's definitely an underwhelming mobile suit. I really haven't seen any kind of use for it. I still powered mine up and I still tuned up all the parts to a three-star rarity. But it's really good that they're actually going to increase it because this is the main protagonist's mobile suit. Why wouldn't they make it a little bit more of a uh, kind of a rare find, you know? Something that's a little bit better uh, than the average like three-star or two-star. 
And of course, they're going to increase the parameters of the Haro Pilot. I'm still not going to use them though. Increasing the amount of upgrade nippers attainable uh, from each upgrade nippers mission other than the MS uh, Capital mission. They're also going to be making it visible whether any multiplier Gundam part that boosts the amount of coins received in events is in effect. So it's some kind of notification because uh, there's a couple of times that I bring I brought a mobile suit into a battle and I'm like, damn, I forgot that multiplier for the event. And I got, you know, just the bare minimum uh, amount of coins. So this is something that is actually going to allow me to visually see, hey, I do have X7 or X2, whatever, uh, on my mobile suit. So I'm like, okay, I'm good to go. And there's some other things that, that y'all yeah, can definitely uh, take a look right here on the screen. You can pause it, read it. Uh, but also, you can definitely go into your notifications on the game, read up on it, so that way you're notified about exactly what uh, they're trying to fix up or, you know, doing some new little things to the game. And finally, some people are, like, asking about what mobile suit that I really use. Um, I'm not going to do analysis because my mobile suit that I use for both online and uh, for, like, just normal play... Uh, they're both very different to be honest. So this is the one I use uh, for online So whenever people uh, go and like they need a relief Gundam, this is the one they're gonna see so it is a speed type um, You know the combat power being 40,000 doesn't really matter. It is an outfighter. I think that is a, a better uh, kind of like Type in my opinion. Uh, it's not it's 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 to me. It's not as good as defender I think defender is one of the best uh, licenses in the game but it's definitely better than end fighter so um, I the way this is the way I look at it it definitely has all the best things of both so it can still block freely and it can also it also gets a attack boost and it's also just a it's a really good typing when it comes to some of the traits that you can actually get and I'll show you what I mean so one of the traits that I want to use because of Outfighter is, say, right here, the Dragon Gundam uh, Pilot. So Outfighter Job EX skill, cooldown re reduced by 60%, or not 60, wow, 6%. Now I'm also combining that with the one when armor is 40% or more, EX skill, cooldown reduced 6%. So I'm combining two of these 6%, I'm pretty sure they both stack, so I should be getting 12%. Um, on the cooldown, which is really damn good, uh, and uh, both of these are not even powered up whatsoever. But my other traits are really good as well. When armor is 40% or more, enemy strong melee power reduced by 17%. Uh, I am uh, close range, so that's going to be assisting. When armor is 40% or more, EX skill damage output boosted by 8. The, the G and shield, I, I'm really just using it at this point because it's probably my best shield in, in terms of both stats and its actual ability, so I'm, I just kept that. The new Gundam Verka when attacking with beam shooting power boosted 17%. So this is not a beam oriented, but it's also good just to have that extra, um, you know, damage output. And the new Gundam is just a really solid uh, mobile suit stat wise. So that's why I went ahead and just slapped on the body and not any of my other four star defaults. Now, the only word tag I do have is Gundam type. Um, I, I almost had enough for close combat and I did at one point. But I felt like I didn't have say, so I was like, alright, I, I gotta really do a lot of adjustments. And I felt like because I did have good stats, I did not have a lot of good EX uh, abilities, nor traits. So I just got rid of um, close combat. I only got a, a little small reduction on my attack. But my melee attack being 5,250 uh, is still really good. And my overall stats are, I think, pretty average. I'm not a beefy defender type, but I am a pretty good melee attacker. Now the main purpose behind getting those cooldowns down as soon as possible is because I want to use Transam Raid. It's still level 1, so it, it's really not that great. Uh, but the fact that I'm still going to be getting that raised melee attack of my squad by 30% is going to be outstanding. Because I want to use this first, and then I'm going to go over here to Iron, I'm, uh, Iron Impact. Then this is already going to have a cooldown uh, that's going to be reduced. So not only th that, I'm going to have an Exia um, Transam Raid active with the boost. If my opponent is still alive for whatever reason, then I just go directly into Iron Impact and just solidify the win in arenas. So this is kind of like the mobile suit I'm going to be using when it comes to arenas. Um, I, it's probably going to change just here and there because I, I am going to be getting another gold star. Uh, well, another gold uh, part. So that's probably going to be the Barbados Arms. And I can replace the new Gundam Arms uh, because they are not really doing anything for me. They have an EX ability, which is good. It's a good melee ability. But it's not going to help me out. But the Barbados Arms have immense, immense melee attack. And that's what I want. I want that good melee attack. Um, so that's, yeah, that's my thing. 
But that's it for me, guys. So definitely thank you for watching. Uh, hope this news was inf you know informative to you. I am definitely going to try and cover as much of it as possible. So come Wednesday afternoon, once I get off work, uh, I'm hoping I can just you know come straight over here, do a little bit of the uh, the event, kind of go over it, go over the banners, do a big pull, and that's pretty much going to be about it. Uh, so. Hopefully everything's good. Arena's gonna be coming out. We'll start climbing the ladder. I uh, don't really know how we're gonna do it with the three-day testing. So we're not really gonna climb the ladder. We're just gonna play test, and that's gonna be about it. Uh, but otherwise, this is going to be the mobile suit you are more than likely gonna see me climb the ladder with, and a beautiful Exia new Gundam age Gundam head weird hybrid. So I think it looks good. Uh, hopefully it's going to perform well in the uh, the arenas, but that's it for me guys Definitely thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you all on the next video. Bye. Bye